Hey everyone, Joey here, and I have been playing The Legend of Zelda Skyward Sword HD on the Nintendo Switch, and I've been looking forward to it ever since it was announced. Heck, before it was even announced. I was very excited to see what they were going to do with the Switch port of this game, how they were going to get around the motion controller requirement from the Wii version. Luckily, they managed to keep the motion controls, but also include button controls on the Pro Controller, as well as the Joy-Cons. You can even use the Joy-Cons for their motion controls. Now with the game coming out very soon, I'm sure a lot of you are wondering how you're going to play this game. Primarily with button controls, primarily with motion controls, a bit of both? Well, I've tested out both options a fair bit, so I'm gonna go over the pros and cons of these methods. I know, I'm hilarious. Now, let's start with the button controls. These are brand spanking new, made for the Switch version, because it's pretty hard to play the game with motion controls in portable mode, so the button controls were a necessity. This is compatible, of course, with the Pro Controller, but the Joy-Cons as well. If you are playing with the Joy-Cons though, you can go to the settings and make sure that the button controls are turned on, but if you are playing with the Pro Controller, this option is just stuck to button controls. But in this game, using the sword is not as simple as just pressing the Y button. It is actually mapped to the right control stick. You flick the control stick down, it slices down. You flick the control stick up, it slices up. Diagonal left and right, you get the idea. And there's also stabbing which can be used by clicking down the right control stick and it just works way better than the motion controls. And the left control stick while being used mainly for movement can also be used for the shield. Granted the only thing you can do with the shield is press down the control stick for a deflection and these deflections can really save your life in battle. And when it comes to using items like bombs and arrows, it's all mapped to the right stick. When using bombs, you tilt the control stick up to aim upward, and you press ZR to throw it, and aiming the control stick down aims the bombs downward so you can roll them by pressing ZR. And arrows, of course, are as simple as just aiming with the right stick or gyro controls and holding down ZR to shoot. It just works. And I love the gyro controls because they offer a bit more accuracy. It's not like you're restricted only to gyro controls. You can use a combination of both the control stick and the gyro, and it just makes aiming a heck of a lot easier. I loved these in Breath of the Wild. I even loved them with the HD remasters of Wind Waker and Twilight Princess on Wii U. Hopefully we get those soon on the Switch. But the gyro is not enabled when flying the loft wing, which is great because I really didn't like using motion controls on Wii while flying the loft wing. I just wish I could have used the control sticks and luckily the Switch version does that. You press the A button to fly upward, you press the X button to dash forward, and the B button to slow down. It's all very simple and I love this very much. The same goes with the beetle. I didn't like using the motion controls to fly the beetle, and it's the same thing here with the control sticks. But now you're probably wondering if the sword and some item movements are mapped to the right control stick. How are you able to control the camera? Well, there's another solution for that. It's not super ideal, but I got used to it almost immediately. You hold down the L button and you're able to move the camera with the right stick. You can also control the camera with gyro motion in the settings, but I don't recommend it unless you have really stable hands, which most people don't. You don't want the camera bobbing around all over the place while you're running. Just don't do that. Also, what's strange is that when you use the sword while the camera is being moved with the gyro, it still stops the camera movement. Very strange. Now, how did I like the button controls overall, especially with the sword combat? Well, admittedly, it's a bit jarring at first. It does take some getting used to, but once I got the hang of it, I did enjoy my time using the sword controls. It is a bit frustrating at times to use, especially since the combat is designed around motion controls, so you have to take enemy movement into account most times but I still had a good time with it. It's not a perfect solution, but it is a solution nonetheless. What's really difficult though with the button controls is that lining up slices is really difficult. So if you're trying to move your sword to an area where an enemy's not blocking, it's not as easy as just moving the stick where you wanna slash. You literally have to flick the stick wherever you wanna slash, which can be problematic a bit, but I found my way around it. It's not too much of a hassle, but I really love the stabbing and the shield blocking on the button controls. They are way easier than using the motion controls. Now then, let's get to the motion controls. These work well. They worked well on Wii, of course they were gonna work well on Switch, and they are largely similar to how they are on the Wii. 
However, gyro controls are not the same as the motion controls on the Wii because the Wii had a sensor bar, the Switch does not. So the pointer will get off center at times and when it does, you have to calibrate it by pointing your controller in the center of the screen and pressing Y. And personally, I only find this to be a slight annoyance. It is just so easy to recalibrate. It's literally as simple as pressing the Y button. It's really not that difficult. I do get how that can be annoying though, but for me, it's an easy fix. What's cool though, is that you don't have to hold L to use the camera controls since the sword controls are mapped to the motion controls, obviously. So you can just use the right stick to control the camera whenever you desire. Also, I forgot to mention this in the button controls. I highly recommend going to the settings to change the camera speed from normal to either fast or very fast. I found the normal camera to be a little bit too slow for my tastes, but moving it to fast or very fast remedies that issue. But yes, when you have motion controls enabled, you aim with the motion controls, you use the sword with the motion controls. When using bombs, you raise the right Joy-Con upward to throw it upward, and then you do a rolling motion to roll it downward. And with the bow, you have two options. You could just hold ZR and aim to shoot, or you can pull back on the left Joy-Con by pressing the L button to make it seem like you're actually pulling a bow and arrow, and it charges up your arrow way faster. I am emphasizing this, and I didn't have this recorded because I actually didn't know this was a thing until after I recorded this, because the game does not explain how to use that method one bit. So, now you know. At times, the motion controls do feel better than the button controls, but when you're trying to do a stabbing motion or even trying to do a shield deflect, it's not as simple because the motion controls sometimes don't detect that movement very well. And the same goes for flying the Loftwing, where you have to literally flick the right Joy-Con up in order to make it fly upward, and you have to tilt the controller to turn it. I don't think it's as convenient as using the button controls. What's also interesting about the motion controls is that you can use them to navigate menus through the game's pointer. And if you flick the right Joy-Con at the pause screen, you can turn the menus like they are pages. It's a nice little detail. I didn't really feel like I had too much of an edge in combat with the motion controls. Matter of fact, I think most enemies went down faster for me when I wasn't using motion controls and I was just using the button ones. Either way, using motion controls in Skyward Sword HD is very similar to how it is on Wii, so if you didn't like the motion controls on Wii, then you might not like them on Switch, they're not that much better, and the fact that you have to recalibrate the pointer constantly kind of makes this a little bit worse than the Wii version. So in the end, there's not really a wrong way to play Skyward Sword HD, but I'm gonna give my personal preference and say that I would much rather play the rest of this game with button controls. In general, I'm just kind of over motion controls and I've already played the entirety of Skyward Sword with motion controls, so I would just rather play the game on a controller, especially since I'm probably gonna be playing this game a lot more in portable mode, so that's where I am with that. Plus, having to fly the Loftwing is just way easier with the buttons than it is with motion controls. If there's only one reason why I prefer the button controls, it's because of that. But hey, that's just my opinion. Are you going to pick up Skyward Sword HD? And if you are, which controller method are you going to use? Button controls or motion controls? Let us know in the comments section down below. And be sure to check out our review of Skyward Sword HD by clicking the video on the top right. Until next time, everyone. Bye.